Ah, uh, snap! Ha! Beat you again. I'm getting so good at this. A nine of spades gambit leading into a classic longstaff defense. A fine move. Ah, oh, gee, cute boy. I'm so glad that I found a real friend to play games with in this pandemic. Look, Tom, I know we've known each other for a long time now. Weeks! And you're my closest, truest friend. Nice! But there's something I need to tell you. I'm not who I say I am. I am, in fact, an alien. <gasps> and it's high time I revealed my true form. Space. The final frontier. This is who I am. Cool. Do you want to play another game of Snap too? Sure, uh, maybe later. Um, but I did bring this game from my home planet of Quebec 5. It's it's a real stormer. And I can review it for the people at home. Yeah, I, I mean, do I get paid an appearance fee or...? Too late for questions. We're already filming. Slap bang in the middle of Shut Up and Sit Down's first ever fun month, we've got a game that is pure fun. Do you want to roll some dice? Do you want to get more dice and roll them too? And lastly, do the words a quacks of Quedlinburg push your luck combined with a quest for Eldorado deck builder excite you? If yes, I am so sorry. But also, welcome to the club! Cubitos is a race game where the objective is simply to get your little animal all the way round this track. And each turn of Cubitos will essentially involve the same two phases, rolling and moving. Perhaps the two terms that, when combined, raise board gamers' collective hackles is the most. But don't worry, because through the magic of rules and components, those two phases are bubbling with tactility, decisions and hubris. Let's start by talking about the roll phase, which has you taking a ladleful of dice, nine to start with, and rolling them into your active zone. Oh god, these are awful. How do you do it, cute boy? Me? Huh. I just roll with the punches. Go with the flow. Oh, right, yeah. Cool. Are these dice rigged? Broken? No, they're just a tiny little bit. Cursed. Only one side out of the six has results on them, and the dark grey dice have only two sides with results on them. The rest of the faces are completely blank, which means after your first roll, you are statistically and psychologically speaking likely to be dissatisfied. But Cubitos has a trick up its sleeve because Yahtzee style. After every single roll, you can roll again, pushing your luck to take another fistful and scatter them across the table. Fill your boots with these nasty, nasty cubes. But beware, because if you roll nothing but blanks on a turn, oh baby, you are busted. Your roll phase is over. Pack up your copy of Cubitos and get in the car, please. It's time for probability jail. Before entering your cell, you must first discard all of those positive results you've been gathering over the round and slop them into the dumpster. It's what you deserve for crimes against trying. So busting is pretty bad, a waste of an entire turn, but the temptations of more, more, more will constantly get you onto its crumbling precipice. But let's say for a moment that you were an upstanding citizen and you chose to actually play by Cubitos' pathetic, worthless rules. Let's say that instead of pushing, you chose to pass, keeping the results that you've got so far and putting all that risk back where it belongs. So you've rolled your dice, you've done your pushing, you haven't busted and you've made it to the run phase. So what do you do with these dice? Why is your luck being pushed in the first place? These two symbols appear often at the start, movement and money. Movement is movement. Each dice showing a foot gives you one square of movement on the board, and if you pass the finish line, then you win. Nice and simple. Your movement might also cause you to end up landing on one of these bonus spaces, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what about the money? Well, money is where things start to get exciting. Money is the path to getting yourself some more lovely, lovely dice. Once everyone has finished moving their little meeple, they get the chance to spend any circular money symbols on their dice to get new, better dice that you can look forward to rolling in the near future. 
But what do these exciting new dice do? Well, for starters, they've probably got more results on their little faces, meaning that you're more likely to get a positive hit when you roll them, meaning you're less likely to bust. But also, they've all got little special abilities, as listed on their little dinky ID cards over here. On the cheap end, a rock on will move back into your roll zone to shield the rest of your dice from busting with its 50% chance of a good result. Or maybe you'll be swayed by this rich dog. He'll give you a hearty three money on this side, and on this side, he'll give you three of his stash of persistent money as well which can be spent at any time rather than during the round. Uh, unfortunately, once the dog has imparted this gift, it will be incinerated. But don't be sad, because that persistent money might give you access to some of the more expensive stuff that's lurking at the bottom of Cubitos' briny blue box. The dugout lets you roll extra dice, not only giving you more positive results if they hit, but also adding more dice to your pool, hiking the chances of a successful roll. Rollosaurus is distressingly expensive, but will give you massive amounts of movement if you hit that big dino face, but it's only a 1 in 6 chance. And Reckless Cheese hungers for push. Every single time you push without busting, you get a movement, hurtling you round the track. His insatiable hunger for risk grows with every passing second, anything, anything to fill the void in his lactose-filled soul. And last but not least, we have Cube Boy, and whenever you roll his face, it means you have to give your opponent five British pounds if they win the game. Cube Boy, are you sure this is real? Chill out, it's just from an expansion. It looks kind of taped on. It's just soddy production, I think. Is that your third cereal bar? I've got to keep my energy levels up. All this reviewing is tiring. Oh, of course, you're... Gearing yourself up for the mm -hmm. big performance. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, you, you keep mm -hmm. doing that. So soon you're gathering a glittering lineup of these all star dice. They're all filling your hand and doing well, but you've still got these grey ones gumming up the works with their pathetic one in six chance of success. And that's where all these spaces around the edge of the board come into play. Peppered around the board are a smattering of spaces that'll net you a variety of spicy bonuses, from money to spend on some big fancy dice, or spaces that let you gain or lose dice, giving you more tools to manipulate your hand into something that'll boost you towards the finish line. And so that is the basic loop of Cubitos, rolling, running, and buying over and over and over again until someone wins. And you'll probably then reset and play again, because Cubitos is a game that is frighteningly fun and in a worryingly direct way. It's a game that is heaving with fun verbs. Roll, push, buy, bust, grab, chuck, and move. Everything here is so immediate that once that core loop is understood by everyone, play is effectively simultaneous and it whips around the table worryingly quickly. But there are a couple of neat tricks inside Cubitos' box that prevent a player that really understands the game from completely steamrolling everyone else. Firstly, if you are lagging behind, every one of these red lines is an extra dice that you can roll. That is more luck to push. As well as this, and maybe more importantly, if you do make a habit of busting, it's not all that bad. Each failure puts you one up on a fan track each time you do it, giving you monetary rewards and these permanent increases to your hand size as compensation. But even with those safety buffers against runaway leaders, the beating heart of Cubitos is still a push your luck game, which is the ultimate defense against a player who is getting a bit too cocky. And what's more, because when you're in the lead, you don't get any bonus dice from these red little lines in between segments, that means that you're gonna be pushing more than anyone else because even the most expensive of dice isn't gonna land on its best face every single turn, which means that you're pushing more to try and stay in the lead, leading to the greatest falls from grace this game has to offer. You're also tacitly encouraged to push because of a rule I didn't explain. When you choose to be done for a round, anything you don't push with will kick around in your roll pile. Meaning that sometimes you're pushing for your current and next turn to be potentially better. And if you fail or bust, well, everything gets to go into the bin. So your next hand can be basically made out of whatever you want. You can compose a hand of whatever dice that you've got kicking around. 
And that's a word I kept using when describing this game to people. Composing, or making a little lineup, a roster of dice that you can then roll later on. You're mixing up a cocktail of dice, you're holding a fistful of chance. But because positive results get zooped out of your pile, the chance of busting on successive successes gets ever higher. So the perfection that you're chasing might be a little too risky if you shoot for it, and as such, each turn you'll probably find yourself making these off-the-cuff probability calculations. Okay, cube boy, it is great having you here and all, but can you do some actual reviewing, seeing as I've done the appearance fee and all? Sure, what do you want me to cover? Well, you, you, could, you could talk about the big thing. I'm kind of tired, honestly, from all this reviewing. But you, you had the cereal bars. Okay, fine. Uh, the big thing in Cubitos is that there's loads more content in the box, and that's pretty cool. I was hoping we'd do that with, with more more pizzazz. And then we put in a slow motion component drop. I think another channel already does that. And then you can edit that in post. So here is the late review turnaround. Cubitos has a massive trick up its sleeve in the form of these four separate boards that you can play on and a practically infinite number of combinations of powers that you can imbue these little dice with. There are seven different variants for eight types of dice, shifting their powers into newer, weirder, more comboable forms, but never in a way that's massively confusing between repeat plays. The dice largely will have similar themes. These shieldy boys will always protect you from busting in some way, for example. And rather than talk about the specific ins and outs of how all of these cards affect their respective Dice, I will give you the skinny. In the manual, there are a set number of different courses that you can try out, and every single one lends the game a distinct flavour. Particular in my mind was the one where there was a mad scramble for fans at the start with deliberately risky rolls, because fans in this game were the key to victory, so everyone stockpiled masses of them while staying completely stationary, only to jet off at the last minute as the one player who chose not to pursue that tactic ambled towards the finish line. And each one of these variants can snap the game in two like dry spaghetti, each one keeping the experience nice and fresh. One of my favourite things about playing this a few times in a row with the same group was watching this pre- and post-game analysis of the combos on offer, scanning through the possibilities and making assessments on what might work, and then rambling about how it all shook out afterwards. This, however, is also where my opinions on Cubito start wobbling around a little bit. I think this way of expanding the game's scope is fantastic, it's adaptable and joyous, but also, some of these variants can make the game a little more sluggish and crunchy to play as players pick through the individual results of all of their dice, especially true when you have the comparing combat mechanic that can appear quite often. And alongside that, I think that when you open the box and play that first scenario, everything seems quite peppy and fresh, and playing it a few times in a row and seeing these new variants can sometimes get players thinking that it's not quite the experience they signed up for. Personally, I love this amount of content, and I love the way that it was presented to me as dozens of variants of a theme all under the same roof in the same box, but I can see how it's overwhelming when you've got a group that's maybe more attuned to the lower complexity end of the Cubitos spectrum. But here is where I stand. I have played nine games of Cubitos at the time of writing this review, and I really want to play another one right now. <laughs> I look at all those different ways of playing and see something that's versatile as opposed to confused. A box of magic nonsense that shifts its identity each time whilst maintaining a welcoming, ridiculous core. But the real question is should you buy this game, when for a bit of luck and a dash more money you can get the two games that this shares its DNA with instead. The Quest for El Dorado is a race game with a deck-building core, and Quacks of Quedlinburg is a push-your-luck extravaganza. We've got reviews for both of those games, and they are absolute classics in both my book and the collective Shut Up and Sit Down recommends book too. Is Cubitos a freaky hybrid going to be a better box than these similar experiences?
So here is where I land. If you want something that is replayable and consistent and solid, then get El Dorado. If you want something more bombastic and ridiculous and party-like, then go for Quacks of Quedlinburg. If you want something that sits in the middle, that's potentially infinitely replayable, really strange and a little bit fruity, then Cubitos is the box for you. But it does cost considerably more than each of those games, at least as far as I could find with my limited research. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, that might have made Cubito sound lesser to those games, but I think it utterly stands shoulder to shoulder with them in its out-of-the-box immediacy and fun, but your group has got to be prepared for things to get a little more crunchy, a little more difficult as the game goes on, as compared to those other games where the core loop changes less. But the solid, molten hot core, these dice in Cubitos, whoo! It may be less elegant, but it is by no means less exciting. I should also mention the last minor problem I have with this game, which is that the little boxes you keep these dice in, kind of cheap and a little nasty. So I might get one of those cool fishing tackle boxes to replace them because I'm a nerd. But why does that matter if all of this is a bit squiffy when you get to roll massive handfuls of these lovely chunky d- What? Cube Boy, have you been using these? Never seen those before in my life. Look, are you, are you done with the review? Yeah, I was just wrapping it up now. And shall I have sit down recommends it? Yeah, sure, I'll put the badge up here in post. Ah, at last. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Uh, you can like and you can subscribe and do all that stuff over here. You probably don't care about that because you're probably thinking about how good Cubitos is and you can reserve a copy by calling the number below. Right, anyway, uh, I'm off back to my hometown of Cubeville. Oh, I thought you lived on Quebec 5. Yeah, sure, whatever. Um, look, I'm gonna have to take this call, is that all right? Yeah, sure. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, he gave it the recommended badge. Yeah, he'll say anything these days. Yeah. Yeah, he'll say anything. Shall I pay the buy? Crack. What a cool guy.